so I guess I will. So today we have our very own Sasha Varnov, who's going to tell us about mysterious triality and rational relativity theory. Thank you, fine. Yeah. So um, I will be talking about the Turing's work uh, on this previous reality. Yeah. This, this, um, Hisham Sati. Who is a friend of ours, I think. And, and yeah, so, um, so he's going to be. Is, is there a way to turn your um, like volume off from my sound? Yeah, just the volume. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah, so the um, um, point uh, was that in 2001, uh, Iqbal, Naitske, and Wafa came up with mysterious reality. And we consider a great success making the reality into a reality. That should always be a great thing to do. Uh, and what they did is uh, they uh, found a mysterious correspondence between uh, algebraic geometry uh, and physics. Algebraic geometry and physics in the, in the form of um, some combinatorial correspondence that they found, but they couldn't, it was mysterious because they couldn't explain it. Uh, and uh, and like uh, deep brains in uh, dimensional inductions, inductions of eleven dimensional M theory, which is something that uh, is more general than string theory. Like string theory happens in ten dimensions, and uh, well, actually, super string theory in ten dimensions, and this is M theory that kind of. Uh, uh, there are different types of string theories and theory is uh, like a theory of uh, united all of them. Uh, and um, yeah, so they found some correspondence between this. And the correspondence was that here in algebraic geometry, you consider Delpet's uh, surfaces, Delpet's surfaces, very classical objects. B, known as B1. B2 and so on, BK in general. Well, it actually goes up to B8 uh, because uh, these are, um, well, maybe M, uh, P1, CP1 cross, sorry, yeah, CP1 cross CP2. Uh, so these are, this is the blow up of CP2. At k points and generic points, k generic points. So be not as CP2 itself. Oh, yeah, sorry, the CP, CP1 cross CP1. That's an outlier uh, of this surface, CP1 cross CP1. Otherwise, it would be called the surface. You see, so second factor. So this, uh, this be not you start with CP2, it will run up one point, you get uh, blow up, and so this is called B1 and then B2, uh, and uh, this way you get whole family of surfaces and uh, surfaces, uh, and these are basically types of surfaces. So you look at those on B1 through the K, and then there is an one outlier surface. And then here in, on the algebraic geometry side, uh, though it's, it's known very classically. Um, in particular, through the remarkable book of my advisor Monian, who recently passed away, um, in, uh, on cubic forms. The book is called Cubic Forms. Uh, that uh, those surfaces give rise to uh, the root system of uh, systems of type EK. Right? BK uh, gives rise to a root system of type EK. So give rise 
give give rise to rise to EK to the system root system EK. Give rise. And this is the combinatoric. Uh, the combinatorics that is associated uh, in uh, to, to those uh, to the sequence of surfaces, algebraic surfaces, which has uh, which is reflected on the physics side as well. Road systems. Systems. Okay. Very combinatorial. And here, uh, you somehow physicist uh, said some uh, weird words like uh, deep brains, uh, like there are certain types of deep brains, and they behaved uh, very much like, like uh, those, like some divisors on those uh, surfaces. And uh, and then, so basically, that was. Uh, yeah, so they, and then they found that uh, also you can extract root systems from those d rays also, you guys. And this is the combinatorial which is similar to uh, the root systems, to, to the root systems of type EK, of type EK. Uh, and uh, here, the uh, I mean, we need the sequence, and the sequence is the sequence of dimensional reductions. So you reduce, there is a way to reduce uh, 11 dimensional M, M theory to a 10 dimensional theory, and this is, uh, and this is, uh, this becomes k equals 1, then you reduce it to, um, to, uh, to 11 minus k dimensions, and this, and this gives rise to, uh, to a certain. Uh, uh, well, theory, which is physical theory, which is called reduction of M theory, uh, to 11 minus k dimensions, and this uh, theory gives rise to uh, a root system of type PK. So, uh, okay, so and the, the, the question was uh, why uh, does it show up? Like, uh, for instance, there were attempts uh, since 2001 of Creating uh, sort of creating a physical theory based on the pets of surfaces. Like you, given a the pets of surface, let's uh, create some physical theory. Write down the Lagrangian of how, they, uh, how else. Write down the equations of motion. How else you create physical theories? But they were all they all failed, uh, and people were really didn't know how to approach this. Uh, then uh, yeah, so what uh, we did with uh, with. Maybe, maybe just one more word, uh, more precisely how this root system shows up, uh, more precisely in, in uh, the algebraic geometric case, in photo pencils. Uh, so the thing is that uh, on if x is one of those uh, Delpezzo surfaces, which has some that is uh, BK, uh, A is in 0 or 8, or CP1 or CP1. Then, um, in, then uh, it, it, you, it, it basically goes like this. You create a certain combinatorial data, which is very simple. NK is a lattice. Well, by here, like it is a free abelian group on k plus one generations and generators. The latest contains k plus one. Uh, so something is more to z z to the power k plus one. Or maybe I should just pick a title and say z. <laughs> If you ask who is that, uh, that is dead, maybe. That's dead. Okay, so um, mk is the length of mk plus one, then uh, it has an inner product. Uh, in, which I would say Lorentzian inner product. That is, well, Lorentzian is a physical term, but it's, it means um, index uh, one k inner product. So it's not a positive definite, it's actually uh, semi-definite, maybe, uh, in a problem. 
And then uh, you have a distinguished element in the case of states. Uh, and this is just an element in uh, NK. Uh, so what are those? Uh, and this combinatorial uh, uh, data alleges an inner product of uh, specific type and uh, the distinguished element case of K. Yeah, it should be some conditions of this case of K. Um, and maybe it's uh, even uh, one has to add a basis uh, to this. Yeah, so uh, such that uh, there is a basis of NK. Uh, e1 and through e2 plus one, uh, through, uh, I should call it pk and then h. Uh, maybe I'll not get the letters for the proper side. h. Uh, the basis of nk, e1 through pk and h, uh, such that uh, ei in j equals negative delta ij, the chronic symbol, and h e i is zero, pro i's and h h is one. So it has one, uh, the corresponding, the inner product has one positive eigenvalue and uh, one and uh, k negative eigenvalues also equal to one. Uh, to be the h minus minus the sum of the i's. Yeah, and uh, oh, yeah, this is so negative k. So this is uh, known to be the canonical. Uh, yeah. So in the case of the pizzos, yeah, the condition is that this is the case, but um, yeah, but. For the reasons, uh, what you take is the second cohomology group is the integral coefficients of the two So let's say dk uh, or cp1 or cp1, the coefficients are seen. Uh, it's, it's also known to be isomorphic to the car group of dk, so the group of line bundles, isomorphic classes of line bundles, only dk complex logic line bundles. And uh, and then this is the lattice, and the inner product is the intersection for the intersection here. Uh, of cohomology, or you can think of this as intersection of divisors. And uh, then uh, the this is the K, case of K is the canonical class. Well, in this case, yeah, canonical class. Which you can associate to every uh, algebraic variety. And uh, so, um, yeah, uh, so th there the, this object, the combinatorial object, is very natural, and from it is uh, it's, it, it's like a formal thing that it gives rise to uh, a root system, namely uh, the root system RK root system of type. EK is obtained from uh, by taking uh, elements alpha in NK such that they are orthogonal to K sub K and whose inner square is negative. Uh, just you know this formal thing, you get a collection of vectors, actually a finite collection of vectors. Uh, in this lattice, and uh, then, um, and it turns out to be a, a root system, as simple as that. Mm. Now, another parallel notice noticed by, by the physicist in the following E10 parallel. And yeah, maybe one more word before this, uh, that uh, E case, well, everyone knows E6, E7, and E8 
there's a, a simple root systems which are given by the corresponding Dicky diagrams. This is basically to say why guys over here. That's the Dinkin diagram corresponding to the root system is six, and is seven is just you add one more node here, you a to extend one more time, and that's it. But actually, uh, for smaller values, it will be d5, and then uh, a four, a two cross a one, a one, a zero, and a two ten. Okay, counter rate, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Yeah. Well, whatever these are, but you, you may just read them off from this data by this definition of what the roots of the systems are. Uh, and um, yeah, and so here, here's another thing, another parallel uh, we should also strike in, in, in some way, namely for the basic surfaces, you can, uh, the point is that if you take B0, which is CP2, and blow it up, you get B1. Blow it up at one point. You blow it up, uh, blow up B1 as, as, as a point, and you get B2, and so on. And you continue this process until you hit B8. You can continue blowing up points, but the problem is that uh, you would get out of the class of the business services, which is, uh, by definition, should be a uh, a, a class uh, should belong to the class of Fano varieties, so we should have the anti, uh, uh, an ample anti-canonical class, uh, and which is yeah, this, this is the anti-canonical class. And uh, uh, but also another remarkable thing is that if you take CP1 and blow it, the CP1 plus CP1, the all varieties, uh, uh, the basis surface, and blow it up. Uh, so these are all blow, blow ups, blow, blow it up. You get B, uh, a surface isomorphic to B2 uh, of this type, so it, the best surface type B2. And so you get this kind of E10 diagram because it has 10 nodes. Uh, but uh, in physics, it's in the same story. Here you start with the 11 dimensional M3, then you do dimensional reduction. Physicists uh, also in this paper they call it compactification of uh, M theta, uh, and they, then they, uh, it's known that you get the type to A string theta, which works in ten dimensions. But in uh, in uh, ten dimensions there is also a type to B string theta, uh, and. Uh, then, if you dimension, do dimensional reduction uh, over each of the, either of them, you will get uh, down to. Uh, so these are dimensional reductions for compactification, as they call them. Uh, you get to a nine-dimensional reduction, which is the same in both cases. And the fact that you get uh, this funny thing happening uh, from two physical theories by the different theories by a dimensional reduction that you obtain one of the same. This is called T-duality. This is just a T duality. This is uh, overused the word duality. They use it for everything. And then you keep doing dimensional reductions, and then you uh, are in the same pattern. Like this is the AD dimensional reduction, uh, and so on. And you get to, um, to 11 minus 8, 3D dimensional reduction. And then if you want to go down, down, because uh, this is definitely not physical, even. The three dimensional space time is not very physical because we, need, we believe that we live in four dimensional space time, but we're not flat. Uh, but, but nevertheless, yeah, they nevertheless consider this three dimensional reduction theory. And so they have this, this picture and so they say, wow, this is uh, exciting that uh, another parallel between, to this, uh, between physics and the surfaces. Okay. Now, uh, when we uh, what we did with uh, Hisham uh, was that we found a sequence of topological spaces that also gives rise to the EK, the EK series of road systems, and which is really directly related to physics. And now I would be able to tell you, after I tell you the topological part of the story, I would be able to tell you what 
uh, what the physical uh, side of the story uh, is actually. Not, not in every detail, because physicists tend to say that, uh, that uh, when you ask them whether uh, this physical theory means this, they say, no, no of course not, it means much more. Uh, uh, like uh, it has so many fields, so many structure, so much structure, so much data that you can't even imagine. But so at least this little piece of data I know very well, which shows up, in, uh, which actually has physical meaning. And so what what we did with Satya, Satya is that we, we turned uh, this duality, mysterious duality, in, which was originally suggested as duality between physics. Uh, and uh, algebraic geometry, we turned it into a triality with algebraic topologies hidden at the, in another corner. The relation between the algebraic topological objects to physics is explicit. This is why I'm a, a solid arrow here. And still, we don't know the relationship between the algebraic topological objects and uh, algebraic geometric ones. Uh, and uh, but so now, actually, this uh, this uh, means there is a conjecture uh, of uh, a relationship between those objects that I will be talking about uh, on the topological side and uh, the Delpezi surfaces on the algebraic geometric side. Uh, this correspondence, um, like the, there is a correspondence, and there should be something, uh, some relationship between those. Uh, objects showing up in those two sides. And if uh, one uh, constructs an explicit relationship between uh, the best surfaces and the objects and topology I will be talking about, the logical spaces I will be talking about, then uh, it would mean, uh, then it would actually close the whole thing because now we have an explicit relationship between physics and, and our topological spaces. And if there is an explicit relationship here, you can just follow uh, the two arrows. And it will complete everything. But uh, even aside from this, uh, you know, um, there is a chance that uh, still there is some um, that uh, those the better services showed up for no good reason in physics, even though I doubt it. But uh, there is a chance. Uh, and uh, but uh, what shows up for a good reason in physics is what uh, I will tell you now. What we have discovered with Satya, and this is uh, so on the algebraic topological side. We uh, found a sequence of spaces, sequence of spaces whose, uh, well, maybe I should write S4, the first space is very simple, and LC is 4, I will tell you a little bit. In the second, what those are LC squared, S4, certain iterated loop spaces of a certain type, LC uh, K, S4. Uh, spaces that whose uh, rational homotopy theory, RHT, rational homotopy theory, um, gives rise, rise to the EK series. And what's very important is that and uh, has um, an explicit relationship to a reduction of entropy. Okay. So those six spaces are um, you start with the fourth sphere and <coughs> move on. You construct yeah, so this is uh, remarkable just by itself because, uh, like, not every well, I mean, uh, you might wish to collect objects, series of objects in mathematics which give rise to, to the EK series uh, by one or another reason. It's, it's something uh, that doesn't happen every day. Like, how many uh, things, like, apart from Lie algebras or uh, simple Lie groups, you know, that uh, give rise to the EK series? You might know some, but yeah, but uh, not, not so many. And the data services is a great example. For instance, the 27 uh, lines on the cubic surface, which is uh, uh, the data surface of type, uh, B, uh, of type B6, 
uh, are responsible, uh, are related explicitly to the uh, Lie algebra, to the simple Lie algebra of type E6, namely the dimension of the fundamental representation of, e of the Lie algebra of E6, E6 is 27, and actually uh, it, it's and it's not a coincidence in algebraic geometry, you can actually trace uh, why this happens. Uh, why uh, there are 27 lines and why, why this is related to, uh, uh, to representation theory of the simple algebra E6. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a very classical thing there, but uh, and a lot of uh, algebraic geometry is kind of intertwined with uh, with um, with this uh, fact that the um, best surfaces are a lot of algebraic the algebra, a lot of algebraic geometry of the best surfaces are intertwined with the fact that the best surfaces are related to the series EK, e namely. Uh, like if you look at, if you want to study the automorphisms of the, the Pesa surfaces, then they, they are related to the bile group uh, of the corresponding type. And if you want, uh, cre uh, like Cremona transformations are famous things in classical algebraic geometry of, I don't know, 19th century. And um, they are also uh, dependent from the bile group or related to the bile group. And uh, then mm, what else? Um, What else is related? I wanted to, to mention, which is related to this. Is, oh yeah. Well, I would, like you want to study lines on certain, on those surfaces and like really straight lines on those surfaces. And this is in fact that you know a cubic surface has exactly twenty seven lines. A general cubic surface uh, in E three has exactly twenty seven lines. And then you can study like for uh, the case B seven. The next after B six there are. Uh, 28 pair, pairs of bite tangents, a uh, very classical thing in algebraic geometry as well. So it's also related to the fact that E7 is, is there and so on. So there's lots of things related to E6, well, to EK there, but uh, it, it doesn't have to happen very often. And apparently, uh, those uh, EK series also play a prominent role for those uh, spaces. So what are those spaces? Those spaces are. are if it, uh, well, what is the L C of Z? Where Z is say, Z is uh, <coughs> uh, let's say it's a uh, path connected. And I want it to be important to work in space, and for this definition, the important at least it doesn't matter. The important. Uh, for later, topological space. The important, the important topological space is a space whose uh, pi one is the important as the group pi one is the important as uh, a, a group, and uh, such that the action of pi one on higher, higher homotopic groups is also the important. Uh, and um, well, it's just some technical condition which is needed. For the rational, for rational homotopy theory to work. And our spaces are all the important. Okay, so if we start with C, the path connected to logical space, then we can form, first of all, so what is LCZ? Uh, we can form the free loop space, the mapping space from S1 to C. And actually, well, if, it's ha if C happens to be not uh, simply connected, then this would connect, we have connected components, but we take the connected component of the uh, uh, of the constant group and this is what we call LZ. And we do need to work with not only simply connected spaces, and this is some little contribution to rational homotopy theory that our paper makes. Because we, we, do, we do things that are common for the simple, simple, which are known in rational homotopy theory. For connected spaces, we do them for, for more general path connected important spaces. Okay, and then you can consider so, yeah, this is, these are just spaces of loops, but you know, parameterized loops, but it's been abandoned to see those spaces. Okay, and then um, 
so taken with along with the map. And then LCZ is uh, the quotient of LZ by uh, the action of S1 by rotating the loop. And actually, I should put a homotopy quotient here, uh, double, double slash, uh, which is like a quotient, but uh, we want to make it homotopy invariant. So it's, uh, I can think of the Morel construction, for example, LZ cross S1 times P S1, for example. Where S1 is the uh, classifying bundle, uh, S1 principal bundle over PS1, of the classifying space of S1. Okay, yeah, so but you may just think of this as a, a version of the naive portion uh, and um, for the time being. And uh, so this is the, uh, we call it the signification of the cyclic loop space. And this came from their papers with Urs Schreiber and uh, others, uh, like Pervini Lorenzo, uh, cyclic loop space, cyclic loop space. This is so the first space with three loop space. And this is a cyclic loop space or a signification. Signification. But sometimes, uh, I think other people call it sometimes the equivalent loop space uh, or unparameterized. And the thing is that uh, we basically, when we kill some information about the parameter by modeling out by rotations, rigid rotations of S1, namely we uh, now, you, uh, you, the picture is this, that you have those loops, but you don't, and they're kind of parameterized, but you don't know what the, the beginning of the parameterization is, where the parameterization begins. It actually is the same topologically as considering completely unparameterized loops, loops because uh, actually S1, B, D, S1 uh, is actually uh, homotopy equivalent to S1. And so, um, to the considered as topological groups. Uh, and uh, so it doesn't really matter uh, by, by which group we mod out, uh, but if you mod out by TFS1, it means we have a group of different morphisms of S1, we completely forget parameterization. Or, yeah, here I'm doing topological things, so maybe I should have considered. Um, yeah, maybe I should have considered uh, like homeom self homeomorphisms. S1 and probably still from the regular to S1, I don't quite remember. Well, but, but it doesn't, even if it's not, uh, then um, uh, even modeling out by, uh, by the diffeomorphism of S1 uh, removes a lot uh, of knowledge about the parameter, a lot of information about the parameter. So basically, the idea is that we want to look at uh, parameter loops. And then we iterate this construction. So we start with S4 and then uh, take. Uh, LC uh, K of well, or say L LC K of C is LC of LC K minus one. Uh, define this uh, sequence inductively, uh, and uh, yeah, and S four is simply connected. So all, all simply connected spaces are important, and so S S four is already important and fast connected. And you apply you apply this for Z equals S four. You get a sequence of those spaces. Um, so then you produce LK, LCK of S4. Now, uh, where is uh, the uh, beast hydra, the DK? So it, it has something to do with. Uh, also the symmetries of those spaces, with actually rational homotopy type symmetries of those spaces, namely, um, um, yeah, rational homotopy type. Uh, first of all, maybe I should say what the rational homotopy type is. So, uh, rational homotopy theory uh, associates with those. Uh, detour on rational homotopy theory associates uh, to the important 
So in the quantum space, the quantum is connected, that connected space Z it associates as A um, the Sullivan minimal model, model and uh, which is a uh, differential graded commutative algebra did you say differential graded commutative algebra uh, with uh, certain conditions which is well the definition is which is uh, Sullivan and minimal Uh, each of those things mean mean something. So, um, and uh, then also another thing is that uh, then uh, rational commutative theory has this remarkable statement that uh, that uh, if you consider spaces up to rational commutative relation, so uh, we say that x to y is. Um, a rational uh, homotopy equivalence if uh, it induces uh, an isomorphism on rational homology h dot x q to h dot y q is an, uh, is an isomorphism that is for all levels of n if it's an isomorphism. Uh, and so, in other words, uh, when we consider a rational homotopy theory, we consider localization uh, of uh, category of topological spaces uh, by uh, rational homotopy equivalences. And then the statement is that uh, what rational homotopy theory does is that uh, it classifies rational homotopy types. So, the rational homotopy type is uh, a class of rational homotopy equivalents. Uh, and of the class of a space uh, with respect to, uh, to rational homotopy equivalence. And uh, rational homotopy theory classifies uh, spaces, uh, well, neopotent. Let me drop class connectivity, assume that neopotent space uh, has, is always, is always path connected. Neopotent spaces uh, are classified by their uh, like Z. Uh, by uh, Sullivan minimal models. So the important space is up to rational equivalence. Yes, it does become a top of Rational equivalents are classified by Sullivan minimal models uh, up to isomorphism. So it's a very easy classification. Uh, of, of, of topological spaces but in, in this rational category. Uh, and um, yeah, so um, yeah, so the, the uh, series EK sits in, as I said, in uh, the automorphisms of the rational commutative types of those spaces. Of those significations of the quadrilateral sphere, and uh, so basically we prove the theorem that um, uh, that says that uh, the maximal uh, R split torus C. Uh, which is uh, in the automorphism group of the uh, uh, rational of this uh, DGC, uh, the Sullivan minimal model of LCK of L4. <coughs> and this is known to be an algebraic group, a real algebraic group. And the thing is that uh, this, uh, those Sullivan uh, minimum algebras or Sullivan minimum models are 
actually uh, three as graded graded commutative algebras, and so and uh, in this case uh, they are finite generated. Those algebras are as, as graded commutative algebras. They are finite generated by finite dimensional uh, uh, graded uh, vector space, uh, and uh, so uh, a, morph a homomorphism uh, from one. Uh, 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 free, so you know, they are saying that they are all M, L, C, K, S4 is always S of V for some, uh, with some differential, where V, S of V is the graded uh, symmetric algebra, graded symmetric algebra, let's say over Q, graded symmetric algebra, on a graded vector space. Uh, well, actually, it happens that it's, it, it's always in those cases, and great, strictly greater than zero. So this part is strictly positively graded. I mean, this graded vector space is strictly positively graded. And, and so if you have a homomorphism from one such object to another, even just a homomorphism, and then the morphism, then is it determined where those things will go, uh, where those elements of the generators, the, the generating space will go. And uh, if it's uh, totally finite dimensional, like this, the, the whole dimension of this is finite, then uh, it, it is finite many things, which, yeah, and also then the component of each degree, if V is finite dimensional, then the component SP of each degree, uh, of, well, not SP, but S of V of degree P. And the symmetric algebra, symmetric algebra will also be finite dimensional. So uh, each generator from this finite dimensional space uh, will be made into. There are choices uh, just uh, to go to this uh, to the uh, to the component graded component of the, of the symmetric algebra of the corresponding dimension, uh, and uh, so it will be a, a finite dimensional vector space uh, of choices. Uh, for each uh, generate, say, element of a basis of this uh, space of its finite dimensional, and then uh, mm, so it, it, it will be, and then there is a, a condition of an isomorphism is uh, an open condition uh, in there, so it's like an affine space, and then you have an open subset, subspace of this affine space, uh, and uh, then there is a condition uh, for, uh, for, the, for this homomorphism, isomorphism to respect the differential, and this is a bunch of equations. Uh, polynomial equation, so it's uh, an algebra, it defines an algebraic group after all. And this is why it's an algebraic group, real algebraic group. Yeah, as a real algebraic group, well, if we are doing this over Q, then it's actually a rational algebraic group. But there is, there is some subtlety that I want to leave out uh, in this. We actually have to consider uh, the real, uh, 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 hom the rational homotopy type over real, over the reals. It sounds a little weird, it's not the real homotopy type. Because the real homotopy type should be the real homotopy type, and <laughs> mainly over Z. Uh, and, but uh, it's called rational homotopy type of, of the reals that we need to, to consider. But let me uh, throw this under the rug and uh, just talk about uh, rational. So it's a rational algebraic group and uh, over the rationals, and, uh, like a lead group, but even better. And then uh, there is a notion, yeah, I should say, let's say maximum Q stream torus. There is a notion for algebraic groups of, of tori. Well, if the algebraic group is defined not over an algebraic closed field, then uh, one has to, may, may talk about the split uh, tori. There is this notion and so on. And uh, the maximum split torus, T, of this, uh, the statement is that whatever this is uh, of this algebraic group uh, is. Um, uh, he is uh, isomorphic, so it's basically a, a torus of rank, an, an algebraic uh, Q split torus of rank Q but K plus one, so it's isomorphic to GM to the power of K plus one. GM is the most negative group. So GM, say, of Q is Q cross Q minus seven. Its rational points are non-zero non-zero rationals. It's basically a multiplicative group of the field. 
uh, and this uh, and the story is the same. the GM K plus one as a torus uh, as an algebraic group of appeal, uh, and uh, it's the algebra. So it's uh, every Lie group and, or, or every algebraic group, which is the torus, uh, has the Lie algebra. So this was the uh, Lie algebra defined on Q. Uh, and the three algebra uh, H, which we call H K, which you know, in here in general will be of dimension K plus one. And it's, it's the the abelian Lie algebra. The torus is commutative, so the it's the algebra is abelian. Uh, here is a canonical basis. So basis gives you an inner product, uh, like up on uh, H, having two bases in uh, H and H star, it gives you an inner product. Uh, and, um, and gives an inner product <coughs> on H, K, and H, K star. So, which automatically gives you automatically gives you the Yeah. So, um, and this is uh, of course, like coming from PI, say, PK, for example, on this space, EJ. Uh, it will be epsilon j of i. Well, maybe it's not an inner product to start with, but uh, if you know that uh, this is symmetric, then it will become an inner product. A priori, it's not an inner product, it's just a linear form, but uh, you get an inner product. And, uh, and it will be of type uh, of index 1 comma k. Uh, and there is uh, an economical element, element case of k in say h k star. Well, likewise, this would be a function for the epsilon i. Okay. Uh, canonical element there such that yeah. Well, okay, canonical element uh, all uh, making it isomorphic, making uh, the collection, let's say, H, K, star, C, and C star, star, uh, then uh, the inner product. And then this distinguished element in K uh, to be isomorphic, isomorphic to 
for that for your testing services. The present service BK. So the same combinatorial data. So again, we construct this combinatorial data. So combinatorially, there is a relation to um, to the present surfaces, but uh, still, it's uh, a mystery why uh, you can get the same the same uh, combinatorial data in both cases. Uh, so here, the data is coming from basically the automorphism, so the symmetries of the. Uh, uh, Minimum model, or which is the same as uh, symmetries of the rational computer type. So it's uh, like uh, self uh, maps of those spaces. Uh, there is a map of LCK as four to itself, uh, such that it, it is uh, uh, a rational equivalence. So uh, this is uh, this would correspond to the automorphisms of this of the sum of the minimum model. And so those spaces, uh, well, first of all, this group uh, carries the structure of an algebraic group, uh, but uh, which you can say from the cell of the model from basic to the differential carries commutative algebras. And then it has uh, a maximal Q spread torus is basically a torus which is defined, uh, in, which is uh, isomorphic to the multiplicative group of Q. So it's, uh, in, uh, it's, um, mm, yeah, uh, that's one possible definition. And so uh, there is mm, there are other tori which correspond to compact tori, but uh, there's a like, Q speed tori, and they're not, uh, notoriously not compact. Uh, and so uh, there is basically, the maximal abelian part of the group of symmetries uh, gives rise to this the same combinatorial data there, uh, and. Um, yeah. So maybe um, I should say tell you a few words how uh, this is related to physics because this seems to be something technical. But on the other hand, in algebraic geometry, you also can think of this uh, of the appearance of the uh, uh, correspondent series E K as something technical because you have to work with in the intersection theory. There, here you have to work with. Uh, the rational commutative type of those spaces, and uh, you have to um, look at uh, rational commutative um, like isomorphisms of those rational commutative types, uh, automorphisms of rational commutative types. We don't know what the, this group is actually. Uh, there is a conjecture that this group is uh, actually tightly related to the group, the Lie group of type EK. Uh, we expect that it should be some kind of Central extension of the new group of type K, but we can't identify the group. Uh, and uh, uh, but we at least can identify this maximum Q split torus uh, and uh, get out of it uh, all this uh, necessary data. Maybe some idea of what this uh, necessary, what, what this data uh, is, where this data is coming from. The idea of why. So the idea is this. The following, for instance, consider uh, the uh, the map of uh, uh, a map of a sphere S four of degree Q of degree map of degree Q. Like, for instance, I don't know a, a Q fold uh, a covering of the sphere onto itself. Map of degree something that you study in topology classes in the first semester. Uh, and uh, map of degree Q. Where Q is positive or natural. Uh, and uh, then um, in, in re, on uh, homology, on integral homology, it induces what kind of map? Uh, that's probably a question again for uh, uh, for your exam in topology. So on rational homology, well, yeah, on uh, it, uh, like okay, it only has four uh, at page four. Rationally, this map, like I don't know, phi, uh, it induces phi lower star, which is what map? It's multiplication by Q. Multiplication by Q. So this is a rational isomorphism of the rationals. Oh, yeah, sorry, not the rational, on integral homology. 
Gitsi, but rationally, it's an isomorphism when you pass to the rational to rational homology, uh, it's an isomorphism. So it's an isomorphism over Q. And therefore, uh, in when you localize in rational homotopy theory, you think this uh, this map has been an isomorphism. It induces a, a nice, uh, an automorphism of rational homotopy type. And this is uh, one of the uh, well, maybe it's got to to this, but you know, for k equals zero, you should only have this kind of element. And this is exactly, um, in, uh, well, this, I mean, if you now combine this uh, with, uh, you take, say, a formal inverse of this in rational commutative theory, this will be like multiply, uh, multiplying by one of the <coughs> On homology, it will be like multiplying by one of the in the rational homology now. And uh, then uh, you combine this, uh, like compose it with the map uh, of degree p, and then you are able to cover uh, rational numbers p of q. So, uh, and if p is not zero, then you would be able to uh, uh, to construct uh, a q uh, cross worth of uh, uh, rational automorphisms of four sphere S four, and this is. Uh, and this is this uh, GM, GM which shows up, uh, which contributes to the stories. GM contributing, contributing. Well, in this case, it makes up the whole torus contributing to C in automorphisms of M of S4 of the cell minimal model, or if you wish, the rational commutative type of S4. Uh, and similarly, uh, then. Uh, for k greater than zero, you can also consider self maps of S1 of various degrees, and similarly build, build uh, automorphisms uh, of, uh, of those uh, significations that use similarly automorphisms of significations of LCK of S4. Well, automorphism simplifications over the rational, the rational homotopy theory, irrational homotopy theory, and uh, and this way you obtain the other uh, indices. And basically, because uh, this is uh, for those uh, uh, simplifications of cyclic loops, with S four is the target space and S one is the source space. Uh, this is where uh, you get this fact that. Uh, actually, those guys are derivatives delta i j for i j less than equal to k. And oh yeah, yeah, I, I think we started. We should have started with this zero. Like, let's say, uh, and uh, and uh, for uh, for k, uh, yeah, and then. Uh, E i or epsilon i epsilon k plus one is zero for i less than k plus one and e k plus one squared is actually one. And this is why we get this inner product if you can sort of uh, the base uh, a, a basis of the torus basically well it generated Connection coming from the size of model. So you can we construct an explicit type of the torus with this g to the power k plus one by doing this, and then prove that it's actually an isomorphism. And then uh, on the level of the algebra, this gives us a, a basis of the algebra, uh, of the Lie algebra, and then the uh, dual space is coming from uh, the uh, the character uh, lattice of this uh, algebraic torus. So there is this notion of character lattice for, for Lie groups, and so it comes out of the character lattice, the dual, the dual basis. And this way we are getting this basis and uh, how, how we, uh, we construct this. Uh, and then the, uh, the distinguished element is something also interesting, is actually uh, it's an element in, we can say it's an element in HK, uh, or that you consider you consider as dual using the inner product, but uh, yeah, so maybe I should say star here. But before taking the star, uh, you can take an element of HK which acts by 
degree as the degree operator. So as the degree operator, that is uh, k sub k times x equals k uh, the degree of x times x uh, on the equivalent model. So if you have there is also a equivalent model, uh, and if you have uh, well of m of l of of l c k plus four of l c k plus four. So if there is also a equivalent model, which is another approach, kind of Lie algebra approach, is compared to the French algebra. The algebra approach is compared to French algebra commutative algebra approach, uh, which uh, is um, mm, uh, which also defines the rational commutative type and describes rational commutative theory. And so the, the degree is slightly different there as compared to. So if you have an actual Sutherland model, you also have to manipulate actual an actual equivalent model because it acts on the rational commutative type anyway uh, of some, some group acts on the rational commutative type. So uh, mm, then uh, you have this. Uh, action of those uh, well of the whole H and then there is a unique element of, of H K uh, which acts on the equivalent model by by multiplying by the degree. And this is uh, where this element comes from. So this is basically all I wanted to say. Thank you so much. Sorry about running out of time. Uh, so, I, maybe this rubric is that I think in the um, like Morgan Sullivan Deleen paper about rational quantity theory, um, so they prove that you've got a, an operator which implements multiplication by degree on the, at least on the Sullivan model, doesn't that force the, uh, the algebra to be formal? Uh, Maybe it's just the existence of an operator which acts by degree. Yeah. Maybe it's not multiplication by degree, but like Q to the degree or something like that. Uh, I'm wondering. Maybe these are these are certainly not formal. Not formal. No, no. For S four. S four is. Oh no, S four is not formal. Yeah. Um, it's an it's an ill-formed question. I, I can I can pick up the reference and, and try to. Yeah. No, well, yeah, I don't know. It, it's interesting, but it, it doesn't have to come by degree on uh, the Sullivan model okay. or uh, uh, the degree of, um, like the generators of the Sullivan model, the space V. Uh, if you're taking in this case to be the rational homotopy groups, rationalization of homotopy groups. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so it's basically we are talking about the action of the rational of the rational commutative groups. Yeah. Uh, but it's actually that uh, the Sullivan model has the degree uh, that you take the rational commutative groups um, not in the same way as in the equivalent model, because in the equivalent model the degree is rational commutative groups shifted by one by one because the white head bracket becomes yeah. the deep bracket on the if you shift the degree by one. So it's it's a little different, and so when you also start multiplying those elements, it goes in a further way. Uh, so uh, so maybe if some, uh, if there is an action of some some element of the Sullivan we don't <laughs> by Q to the degree of something that is, is formal than it will be formal. And is there a particular reason that um, that you're working with S four and not not the mother sphere? Uh, no, uh, the particular, I mean, there is a particular reason, but it's physical. Uh, actually, the same uh, argument will go for uh, all even dimensional spheres. Um, but, uh, and, and maybe we haven't thought about this, maybe it was for odd dimensional spheres. Sure. You're going to get a different model for k equals zero, at least, because the uh, odd sphere will be just a, will be formal. On that. Yeah, yeah, it will be formal, but nevertheless, there is. Uh, like look at its uh, automorphisms. Its automorphism will be exactly uh, like. Well, they're both rank one. Rank one, yeah. They should be rank one, both. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it, 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 it just, yeah, but there's a good chance that it works for any spheres, uh, even for formal spheres. Uh, and so, uh, for formal odd dimension spheres. So, uh, mm, mm, yeah, the sphere S4 was taken for particular physical reasons. Uh, and uh, it, it definitely works for uh, at least uh, even then other even dimensional spheres. Uh, so, but the reason is physical. Uh, the, the physical reason is that uh, in physics, like uh, the uh, minimal model of those spheres, you just here, n dimensional spheres of SA2 n is. Uh, is uh, Few of an element G, well, it's, it's a little g uh, to n g uh, so four n minus one g to n equals to zero, and these are elements of, of those degrees, and uh, uh, d g four n minus one equals to G to n squared, to n squared, uh, and um, <coughs> yeah. And uh, on the other hand, for n equals two, that is, when you have four sphere, you get particular dimensions which are relevant to physics because m theory uh, reduces in the infrared limit. Now I'm saying some of the norms from Hisham that I don't really understand. And then it gives you 11 dimensional super gravity, super, super gravity uh, which uh, is defined by two uh, fields, uh, G, capital G4 on, uh, so this is a four dimensional differential formula in space time. And G7, which is a seven dimensional form on space time, uh, and uh, which satisfies the, the, the same equations. Well, the equations are slightly different, but it doesn't really matter. And so uh, this is specifically related to this. So we have to take n equals two so that those things, those guys, areas match what happens in physics. And so in physics, you have those, those guys, these are basic fields of the physical theory, and then there are equations of motion uh, which are dg4 equals zero, dg7 equals negative one half, g4 by dg4, uh, and uh, defining the super gravity. And this basically repeat those equations because uh, you wouldn't change much if you put a non zero constant in here. It's still another model, an isomorphic model. To it. Another step of the model, which is as well to this one. So you get a map from the. Uh, yeah, from this you get a canonical map from S4 to S4 from uh, the space time. Well, to S4 to the uh, uh, to the rationalization of S4 over the reals. And this is why we needed to take the reals because it's the RAM algebra you take uh, of, of this manifold. So you take the real coefficients. So in, you get a canonical map from X to the uh, to the space, which is rationally commutative equivalent over R to S4. Uh, and uh, uh, just canonical map. And so you kind of read off the, the, from the rational commutative theory of this, you read off uh, the physics, the super gravity here. So it's really cool. And the same happens for reductions, exactly the same story. Any other questions? All right, if not, then Sasha again. Okay, so, what is the exact length here? 445. Downstairs? Uh, yeah, well, for outside. Yeah, yeah. usually be the outside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Probably say that. I can. Yeah. yeah.